Steps away from Ronaldo. Hey guys, welcome to the Pythagoras Perspective, brought to you by Pythagoras in Boots. Today's topic of discussion will be Phil Foden versus Jack Grealish and the battle to be England's long-term number 10. In terms of goal threat, Grealish seems to be the more immediate goal threat. He's ambidextrous, he possesses power and placement off both feet. He naturally picks up good areas in and around the box to take shots and he does love taking a shot. Who can blame him? His ball striking technique is vastly superior. We've seen him score some absolute scorches from distance on the volley, curlers. He's pretty much got every shot technique in his locker. Um, he's also a brilliant penalty taker, as we saw last year in the playoff semi finals against the Albion. And he's a great set piece taker in general. Foden at youth level, especially for England, has also had a decent scoring rate with 11 in 23 appearances for the under 17s. He's more of a finesse striker of the ball, doesn't really possess any true power. He's someone that is going to have to work on that element of his game. He's not a natural goal scorer, but he is quite composed in front of goal. Eventually, I see him as someone who gets on the end of moves and develops into a finisher like a David Silva. The important thing to note though with both players is Lampard and Gerrard didn't break 10 goals a season until they were age 25 and above. In terms of passing, I'd say Grealish at first sight is the better long passer. He seems to be able to switch play easily. He seems to be able to cross the ball better. He seems to be able to hit outside of the foot passes. Generally speaking, he has every type of long pass in his locker. But if you watch Foden more closely, you realise that despite his propensity to make shorter passes, he does have a really good long pass in his locker. In a sense, he reminds me a bit of a young Paul Scholes, where... The long passing won't become as big a feature in his game while he's a young man able to drive at the opposition and commit players. But as he ages and his game slows down a little bit, he'll have to spread the play a bit more. And he produces some very good raking balls in behind fullbacks, finding his wing forwards. He's able to put strikers through on goal from deep positions. So at the moment, I'd say maybe Grealish edges it. But I think in the long term, I wouldn't be surprised if Foden ends up being the better long passer. In terms of general rate of pass, Foden's far superior. He just caresses the ball into players' feet. I mean, it's not to say Grealish is heavy-handed in that sense. It's just Foden is so delicate with his passing. There's a reason why he's been compared to the likes of Iniesta. He really has a special talent in terms of the way he rates his passes. In terms of decision-making and timing of the pass, Foden's superior too. You just trust Foden to make the right decision of when to pass the ball, when to hold on to the ball that second more to delay the pass. He's like a young Fabregas in that sense. He's just got that innate footballing brain of when to release the ball at the right time. Now, Grealish's decision-making is decent compared to your average footballer, but when we're looking at the real higher levels and we're looking at the, the great footballing brains in world football, I think Grealish at the moment just doesn't seem to have that same level of decision making that Foden does. In terms of killer passing, both of them have excellent vision. I'd say Grealish at the moment, it's hard to determine how good he really is because most teams that he comes up against know that he's the biggest threat for Villa. So they're anticipating his killer passing. So they're already blocking off a lot of his options. With Foden, we've only really got to see it at junior level, but he does seem to have a really good killer pass on him. And it'd be interesting to see how he fares when he starts breaking through properly into City's first team setup. But he seems to have more of a finesse with his killer pass just that touch more delicacy but at the same time he's more conservative he's more choosier when he wants to make that killer pass whereas Grealish seems to be a more direct player and always looking for an opening so an interesting area of debate there who's better at the killer pass in terms of ball circulation and possession Grealish is simply too slow he holds onto the ball for far too long that might be a problem for him when he tries to play at a bigger club Bolden is already a young master at this he's at the perfect club under the perfect manager for this he just passes and moves excellently at junior level as well in terms of ability to control the game it's an interesting one Grealish has the ability to dictate the play he's dictated the play for years at Villa and he's the natural conductor in the middle of the park the quarterback of the team, as well as the number 10 of the team. He just oozes authority on the pitch. He struts around the pitch like he owns it. He wants to imprint his identity on the game. Foden is more of a collective controller, like an Iniesta or a Silva. His team as a collective is more likely to control the game, but that's because he plays at City and under a manager like Pep Guardiola. 
He's not as influential as Grealish is in terms of dictating the flow of the game. So let's just say your team is not in possession, they're struggling. Can you get on the ball and change the whole flow of the game? Can you control the pace and tempo of the game? I don't think Foden has shown that just yet. I think Grealish shows that week in, week out. However, we have seen with Foden in the recent under-21s, despite England struggling, Foden was showing more authority on the pitch. He was beginning to control proceedings. The French couldn't get anywhere near him because he was having that much of an influence over the entirety of the game. So I can see that part of his game growing. He's only 19 and he will get better in that respect. But I do think his personality is slightly more humble. So he's someone that wants to be part of a team framework whereas Grealish wants to be the system whereas Foden's happy to be part of it so the next thing we're going to look at is movement with the ball and movement off the ball now with the ball both love carrying the ball they both favor opposite flanks Grealish being right footed likes coming in off the left mostly favors doing his little foot rolls to change direction in contrast Foden prefers his little croquettes Iniesta style one twos with the feet to change direction Grealish is more courageous, he invites challenges, he likes holding onto the ball that, well, I was going to say second longer, but maybe five seconds longer, but on the flip side, maybe he holds onto it for far too long. Foden's a bit more flimsier in possession, he needs to become more stronger in possession when he enters the first team on a more regular basis, but naturally he's got that better sense of when to dribble, when to release it. So they both need to take elements from each other's game to become more efficient in possession. Off the ball, Foden streets ahead when it comes to moving off the ball in possession. He's already tailor-made for that elite possession side, whereas Grealish just doesn't move enough off the ball. He's not dynamic enough. He's more static. On the flip side, Grealish has a better sense of timing in relation to runs in and around the final third. He's got that Deli Alli-esque sense of when to make runs in the box, but Foden's proved that he too can get on the end of things. He nearly scored from a cross in the under-17s final, And in order to score his second, he made a dart run from the right-hand flank and received a long ball to score his second goal. Now, in terms of defensive contribution, Bolden's been forced to press high up the pitch because of Pep. The English youth setup's all about pressing the ball now high up the pitch. It stems from Gareth Southgate's philosophy of trying to modernise the English setup. So he's naturally more dynamic, more of a ball winner than Grealish is. Grealish has gotten into some seriously bad habits at Villa. He's a bit mollycoddled by playing in a system where he's the star man and people do his running for him. At the moment, there's a danger of him ending up as the English Mesut Ozil, where when he moves to a bigger team, he's going to be caught out by the fact that whilst he may be able to fit in in possession off the ball, he's going to be a tactical liability. In terms of their ceiling and what they can achieve in the game, I think Foden's more of a safe bet to become a huge success and a star for his national side, whether it be City or some other club. He's got more professionalism in his veins. He's a better mover on and off the ball. He's already proving that he can fit into that modern way of playing at the elite elite level. He just needs to get stronger physically, but I think mentally and tactically he's almost already there. And I can't really see him failing, injury permitting. Grealish is more of a gamble for me. He's more of a Glenn Hoddle style player where he needs the stars to align. He needs the right team. He needs the right manager. Ideally, he would go to a club like Liverpool where the fans love worshipping certain heroes. Someone like Klopp, as as much as he, he is a system manager, he loves to get to know individuals and turn them into more well-rounded individuals he gets. Whereas, let's just say Grealish played for Man City. Someone like Pep just wouldn't get him. He'd see Grealish as, as Zlatan someone who'd become an issue for him, someone who doesn't work hard enough for him, and he'd end up hating him. So Grealish needs to really be careful as to which club he signs for for when he leaves Villa and tries to challenge himself to play at that highest level. So there is a gamble that he could sign for the wrong team or the wrong manager comes in and suddenly he finds his nose out of joint and he's he's forced to play at a lower level again. So the next question is, can they both play together for England? Now, the way I see it is, If they both do go on to be successful in the club game and they both go on to be first team players for one of the top four clubs in England, they will eventually be asked to play for the national team and they'll be expected to solve that problem area for England, which is the midfield. That's the one area where England are seriously lacking tactically uh, in terms of talent. It's just not working for me. I don't rate Deli Ali enough. I think he's more of a second striker. Doesn't really have that ability to control games in midfield. And whereas these two are definitely way ahead in that respect. 
if they were to both play in midfield, I think one of them would need to play a bit deeper in that centre mid role, whereas the other one would get the more free license to roam in that Iniesta position. I see Grealish as someone who could one day be converted into a central midfielder. Now, whilst he lacks the defensive work rate, he's got better range of passing and the way he just has that aura on the pitch, that strength, and he's quite decent in the air these days as well. So he's someone that could just roam around in midfield and just dictate that play, dictate the game and stamp his authority in the pitch. Whereas I think Foden just suits being more of that up and down player, someone who's just tasked with with running the ball, getting into that final third, looking for little spaces where he can exploit with his killer passing. Whereas Grealish, as much as he's a better goal scorer and more of a threat in the final third, I just think once he leaves Villa, he's going to struggle slightly to score as much goals as he would do at Villa where the whole team revolves around him. But I can see him becoming a midfield conductor who can also score goals from range. That's where I can see him becoming uh, an elite player. I don't think he's an elite number 10, but he could become an elite central midfielder, but a dictating midfielder, like a like a Perlo style midfielder, someone who won't have huge defensive responsibilities, but just through his sheer positioning, uh, he'll be able to cut it. But we'll see. Pythagoras' perspective is that Foden will ultimately prove to be the more talented player. He's more of a certainty to make it at the highest level. He's more likely to be entrusted with England's number 10 shirt in the future. Whereas I think Grealish will have to make that big move, adapt to playing at a bigger club. And eventually at the age of 25, 26, he'll start coming into his prime. But by that stage, he'll have maybe realize that playing at number 10 won't suit him as much and i think ultimately he'll probably play a bit deeper when he does make that big move anyway guys thank you for watching and listening please subscribe share like and leave your comments below let me know who you think will be england's next number 10